Hi, I'm Cheryl Milford from Holly Roberts Middle School in South Carolina, and this is NASA Now. Hi, I'm John. In the news, there's been many articles about the Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle. Today, we'll talk to an expert who has a very important role in the development and construction of this vehicle. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA now. Using robots to service satellites in orbit. NASA recently completed a demonstration of satellite servicing tasks using the International Space Station's Canadarm2 and the Canadian-built robot Dexter. During this five-day demonstration, Dexter performed a variety of tasks on the robotic refueling mission module affixed to the outside of the International Space Station. With the new tools slated for launch during the summer of 2013 and early 2014, the robotic refueling mission will include new activities that will expand on this groundbreaking operation. The goal of the robotic refueling mission is to demonstrate how remote-controlled robots could access and extend the lives of satellites currently residing in geosynchronous orbit. The Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle represents the next step in beyond low Earth orbit space travel. The design, testing, and fabrication of this unique vehicle involves thousands of people at hundreds of locations. Our expert today is the Assistant Manager of the Orion Crew and Service Module Office. She joined us to discuss the Orion Project and its complexity. The multi-purpose crew vehicle, also known as Orion, is NASA's next crewed vehicle. The space shuttle went to low Earth orbit, which is about 250 nautical miles above the Earth's surface, whereas the Orion will go to beyond Earth orbit targets like the Moon or an asteroid or maybe someday even Mars. The Orion is actually a lot smaller than the space shuttle. The reason for this is that the space shuttle was only able to go to low Earth orbit, whereas the Orion is going to go to a beyond Earth orbit destination. It takes a lot more propulsion and power to get it out of Earth orbit and into that much farther destination. So whereas the space shuttle could really carry a lot of cargo and a lot more people, the Orion can only take four people and a really limited amount of cargo. The Orion is being built all over the United States. We have about 500 different companies that build all sorts of pieces parts of all different sizes. All of those parts are brought together and they're assembled into sub-assemblies and then they're brought down to Kennedy Space Center in Florida for the final assembly of the Orion vehicle. The group that I work with, the crew and service module, is basically the vehicle. So you have the conical crew module, and then you have the service module that has the propellant and the solar arrays and the thermal control, and they move together as a vehicle right until the crew module is going to re-enter the atmosphere, and then it sheds the service module, and the crew module comes back in. NASA recently partnered up with the European Space Agency to actually build the first couple of service modules for Orion. So it's actually an international vehicle at this point. One of the most important tests that we have coming up will be in late 2014, which is called EFT-1, the first exploration flight test. That's where our first test vehicle actually will be launched from Kennedy Space Center on the Delta IV rocket. And it will go up, makes a couple of orbits, and comes back in with about 85% of the energy that it would build up if it had come back from the moon. This is to help test out all of our guidance and navigation and control systems, and also test out our heat shield technology. So it's a very important test, and it's coming up in just over a year, and we're very excited about it. The best part of my job is getting a chance to talk to kids in the public. It's just 
so fun to get to share what I do every day with them, to see their excitement about space and about science and about astronauts. And it's just really neat to get to do that because I realize how much I love what I do um, when I get to share it with other people. Wow, Nicole, thanks for sharing. Now that you've seen some of the moving parts necessary to create the next vehicle for deep space exploration, here's your chance to design your own model spacecraft. Teachers, you and your students can take to the skies using your design skills in this activity. Engineer a stable rocket as you check for the center of mass and the center of pressure. You'll find it under the activity tab for this lesson on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer School.